What's up, everybody? Man, I haven't been live in forever. I'm in Sweden. So I thought I would say hello. What's up? Hello from Stockholm. What's up, Andrew Griffin? Mariposa. Jeremy Torres. Irfan. <clears throat> Who's out here on a Saturday night? I'm in Stockholm, so it's midnight in Sweden. I know most of you are. Oh. Good bit are you in the U.S.? Am I okay? So far, so good. No, I'm not. I was in Malmo, but I'm up in Stockholm now. Finally got here. Hello from Copenhagen. It's the best book. Last book I've read. I read the autobiography of Black Hawk, Native American. First Native American book written autobiography in the early 1800s, it's crazy. People were horrible to the Native Americans. Although they were pretty ruthless warriors themselves, man. We missed you, what's up? Thank you, hello from India. What countries, we got, how many Swedish people we have? What's up, Lars? How many Red Bulls? Do I look like I drink a lot of Red Bulls? There's San Diego. Let's see who I should invite on here. Say hello. You think Sweden, how do I think Sweden's handled the pandemic? So Sweden right now is pretty open in terms of no masks, but uh, they do have early, like everything closes at like eight o'clock. My thoughts on Palestine. I, I saw a whole bunch of stuff about Palestine right now. I should know more about it. I'm not educated on the fact. I'm not educated. I should be, but I'm not. <laughs> uh, let's see. Favorite thing to do on lockdown. Mm, I look different. I got longer hair now. Letting my hair grow out. Somebody said they're a parody life coach. So who's out here making some money these days? Who's out here adding some, stacking some muscle on? What's up? How are you? Oh, I lost somebody. <laughs> Golly. Hello. You need a sponsor for your app. What's the app? Someone made a million dollars on Bitcoin. Yo, when is YouTube rants by Ty coming back? You know, I I mostly now train like my people who run my brands now. I'm gonna do a, in, on Tuesday. If you're an e-com wizard or you think you are, I'm gonna run a hackathon who's the best marketer out there. And I'm going to uh, actually start hiring some people. I need to hire about 35 more people this month. Marketing geniuses are marketing geniuses to be. I will help you become one. So yeah, I'll put a link. I'm, I forgot to put the link today. I need to put that. But for Tuesday, you can come on the live Zoom with me. I'll be doing a hackathon, testing you. I got different tests. See who's got what it takes. Please do a YouTube rant. What do you want me to rant about? People always talking to me, wanted me to talk about something. Best way to find a mentor. Someone's on step 48 of the 67 steps. I'm almost done with my 67 steps books. This summer I'll have it out. Oh, here's a whole bunch of, there we go. Book questions and answers. Thoughts on crypto, hello from you. Someone says they're a wizard at e-com. Thoughts on crypto? I mean, I've been telling people about crypto for many years now. Um, a lot of the projects that there are now will fail, but the concept will persist. That's what I've been saying since the beginning. So be careful in terms of what you put your money in, because a lot of stuff's gonna disappear. It's just the nature of the game. It's the evolution of the species, so to speak. There was a time in the Cambrian period of evolution where you had 100 million species that have dis since disappeared. That's the same thing that happens in any competitive space, whether it's a new type of financial, you know, 
of new financial paradigm, so on and so forth. So where's the Lambo? Black Lambo? I don't have that one. I still have a Ventador. But man, I'm traveling so much. I'm in Europe. I don't even use the cars that much. Best way to make a million this year? Believe it or not, I was thinking about this. Like, in my SMMA course is more relevant than ever. Same with my e-com stuff, like social media marketing. <laughs> I told people to do it in 2016. I trained like 50,000 you know, people and agencies. It's as relevant as ever, if not more, really. So, what do you think of the marketplace with hiring employees in America? <laughs> America ain't the only place with talent. Not the only place with talent. There's no way crypto is going away now that it's accepted yet. But the question is, you know, will Dogecoin disappear or persist? These are harder to predict. Some decentralized finance, for sure, that concept will persist. But yeah. Someone said they made a million bucks in Google. Okay. Best advice to get more leads in a business. The next big impact you want to make on the world. Real estate agents, a good niche to go after in SMMA. How did I get shredded? How the workouts going? Good. Saturday as I do lighter workouts. I'm gonna write a book on everything, I'm, like all my experiments in terms of like fitness stuff. I cut it down to about nine and a half percent body fat, but now I'm up to about ten and a half. I did a what's called a refeed week. Let's see. Somebody who wants to go live. Airbnb, still potential. Still for sure coming out of this. <laughs> you wait. Coming out of this pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on, Ty? Uh, where are you at? <laughs> I'm in Miami, man. Miami, look at that sun. Are man, you I did not originally? expect you to, <laughs> to pick up my request. <laughs> hey, fortune favors the bold, man. Fortune favors the bold. That's dope. That's dope, What's man. Now, now t I just had I just had a question. Um, yeah. What do you think is the best industry to get into? I'm in a credit space, and um, I was kind of thinking about. Well, I'm I'm already doing e-commerce now. I'm, I'm I'm in the process of getting like ten stores. So, what do you think about the e-commerce space? Do you think that that's a great? Still good. When you start out, pick a niche, find like a supplement or something. Find like a. I mean, with Radio Shack that I own. Sometimes we'll find just like one winning product that you can run with and make a couple hundred grand or even a million like electronics space. There's some cool stuff out there. Toys, believe it or not, there's something you need something eye catching and then you can expand your store. Try to get one, two, three, four e-com winners. And then once you see what really pops, then you can build a whole general store around that. So if toys, if you, cause some of it's your natural inclination is good at, recording ads and copy for toys, then mm -hmm. you ban from three or four SKUs to 3,000 SKUs. Some of my brands have, you know, hundreds of thousands of SKUs, like Pure One and stuff. So you got to mess with around with a little. You can make these two or three product stores. See if you can't get a little traction. Man. Gotcha. And which one would you prefer, Amazon or Walmart? <laughs> <laughs> track Amazon it's got about eight times the traffic I think I think Amazon has like 2.5 million a billion unique a month and something like Walmart's at about 400 million a month so okay. yeah I would uh, I would try to crack the Amazon code first once you crack that code then Walmart will be easy you know good luck out there man all right Patai thank you thank I appreciate you. it or, or connect. I don't even know what the fuck you call this. I don't even know how to take you off. Might Hold be on, uh, see forever. Right. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there. Boom. All right, man. All right. Take care. What we else we got? Oh man, there's a whole bunch. Someone said they're not kidding. They spent half a billion in media dollars. Come work for me. I need some badasses. I'm hiring about 35 more people in my marketing division this month just to run. I got 10 big brands that I own buying more. I got a couple deals that will probably close in the next month or two in terms of stuff that I'm buying, you know.
So San Antonio. I'm in Sweden. Who's here from Sweden? Who's here? Who lives in Sweden? Where's Mr. Beast? <laughs> Lakers making the playoffs. I don't know what's up with the Lakers. I've been out of the U.S. for a while, man. Slimmed up. Yeah, I cut about 25 pounds. I'm on my cut. I'm going to do it. I'm almost done with the deep cut, but trying to retain muscle. So I'm doing a refeed week. You got to refeed every couple months. Canelo versus Billy Joe. You know, I've been boxing a lot more. I box. I train under a guy named Teddy Atlas, if you know who he is. He was Mike Tyson's trainer a long time ago. I love boxing. I mean, obviously, I don't want to do it as a, as a biz, but just for conditioning, keep you tough. Where am I in Sweden? I'm in Stockholm. The next doge. Someone's on parking lot Wi-Fi. Hey, it works, man. Did I move out of the U.S.? I didn't leave the U.S. I'm in Puerto Rico, which is a territory. Someone invited me to their restaurant. Where's your restaurant? Where's the restaurant? I'm in Brazil. Tudo bem. How's my diet been? It's been good, man. I'm a pretty disciplined machine when I want to be. That's Somebody asked me to do a rant. I'm going to tell you this. I'll leave you all with this. 2021 is the year to get your discipline in order. Mental discipline, daily routine discipline. People are too weak. They can't stick to one thing for a week, two weeks, one month. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to do anything with your life if you uh, literally have no discipline. And most people on a one to 10 are like a two, three, four. You really gotta operate in the nine to 10 space. Maybe you're not a 10. Nobody's perfect in terms of discipline, but a nine is attainable and it just comes step by step. And so, you know, the first step to do for, you know, that one talk or in book about make your bed, that's a good example. Make your bed, not necessarily literally your bed. It could be another thing. Like for me, I tell people, my cousin's with me and um, he's young. And I'm like, bro, you gotta, you gotta be a disciplined machine. At least hit the gym six days a week. No problem with hitting. So you don't have to hit it hard. You don't have to do, you know, you don't necessarily want to hit weight six times a week. But I try to hit the gym six days a week. Take Sunday off, you know. When I want to, I can be a 10 out of 10 on discipline. You know, I, I pick and choose. You're not going to be able to be a 10 everywhere. But health, wealth, love, happiness, this one you can hit. You can definitely hit this. Um. You can do 5 a.m. in the morning. I mean, waking up early is part of it. I, I think that's not the most important place to start to build discipline, in my opinion. Um, I think discipline, to me, is stuff that's actual tangible movement. So, for example, you can track your body fat percentage. You can track, if you use a DEXA scan, how much muscle you have, like, Going, if you wake up at four in the morning or five in the morning, I'm not sure you can track that to necessarily. I mean, why not wake up at three in the morning? There's people who wake up at two in the morning. I think Benjamin Franklin or one of these guys used to wake up at two in the morning. I'm not sure that's as cor correlated to success as you think, but I like tangible stuff like can you hit the gym six days a week? Can you um, track your food? That's a great discipline right there that has immediate effects. Use something like my, my fitness pal, car manager. You know, like I work when I do like my actual money making, I hit, I hit the laptop, we can say in like 18 minute cycles. So I'll do 18 minutes intense work, a sprint. Then I do nine minutes of uh, like rest, Just do whatever I want, go on Tinder or whatever you want to do. So, and then stay in a sprint mode like that. Sprint's kind of like sprinting versus jogging. Jogging is not that good for your body for the most part relative to sprinting so it's the same with business i like to get in a discipline of sprint i just focus get all my slacks knocked out get my emails knocked out boom then on nine minutes just doing nothing you know so that's that's an example of discipline that i think pays off again i'm not sure making your bed i know that was a metaphor but i think there's better actual things to do that i like to do like that where discipline is required.
So for business, how many days, oh, how many hours a day to work? I mean, that's where you can hit a discipline too. Some people work too many hours because they're sloppy and shitty in terms of how they plan out, you know, conscientiousness, the four pillars of wealth, okay? Scientifically, have been proven people who are high in the traits called conscientious traits make more money, outperform others. So that's diligence, organization, perfectionism, and prudence. So those are areas like getting your diligence is what I've been talking about, hard work, but also getting your organization. Like, I don't just work. I use Todoist. I use task tools to follow and prioritize everything I have to do like a machine. So that's an example of discipline that I think pays off more than making your bed or some shit like that. Making your bed's fine, but you can over-discipline yourself on things that don't matter. Shit, hit the gym six days a week. Walk 10,000 steps a day. Don't sit for more than 30 minutes a day. These are things that you can discipline yourself that have real payoffs. Work in 18-minute cycles and then take a break. How to beat anxiety? Read the book by the famous professor Joseph Ledoux, Anxious. You know, do Headspace every day or Calm app. Those are meditation apps. I think they're free. And th that kind of discipline will pay off. There's a ten. Take a nap every day. Take a nap every day destroys making your bed every day. You know? Someone said, Ty, with no kids, where's your wealth going? How do you know I don't have kids? Let's see. How do you plan on get organized? Do you have an agenda or app? Yeah, I use a lot of tools, man. Some of you should come work for me. Like I said, I'm going to start hiring. I need to, I'm going to hire a couple hundred people this year. But um, I'll put a link up later today and tomorrow for a hackathon. I'm going to do a big like Zoom call on Tuesday. You can join, basically, if you're good. Um, I might hire you. Jake Paul or Floyd Mayweather? <laughs> well, it depends. Um, Jake Paul, I've told people, I know Jake, he's a lot stronger than people think a lot more skilled. He's, he's, he's an athlete. Both of those guys, um, in terms of boxing skill is Floyd Mayweather, arguably the greatest boxer of all time. Certainly most likely the best defensive boxer of all time. So if is Floyd really in it to win it, then it's going to be tough to ever beat. Floyd man, even as Floyd gets a little older. I know Floyd a little bit. I took him to a Laker game last year or two years ago. I don't know him well, but I took him to a game and we talked at the Laker game. I mean, we sat together and it's pretty cool. What did I do different to lose 20 pounds? You can always lose or gain, baby. It basically always control your calories, watch your calories like a machine, track them, and the body responds. 99 out of 100 people. There are people who have some hormonal problems, but it's literally – very rare. Almost anybody you ever meet that's too skinny, it's because they eat too few cap carbs. I mean, uh, calories. By the way, I don't do keto or I don't do any hack kind of stuff. I do like old school shit. Just like, you want to be good at jujitsu, you hit the mats. You don't learn some little Krav Maga trick that poke somebody in the eyeballs or something like that. No offense to Krav Maga, but it's the same in business. You want to make money? You learn how to make money. Like, there's no quick hack that just makes you money. And anyway, why? Do, if you learn a quick hack to make money, you'll probably lose the money quick. I've learned how to make money. I could lose it all. And you, once you have that skill, you're in possession of the skill. It's yours. And uh, you, once you learn how to make money, it's a perpetual machine. You know. So, how do you find how to buy investors like you? Hmm, that's a good question. Most of the stuff I buy now is pretty big. Like I usually buy companies doing 500 million or more in revenue at this stage, but there's a lot of investors out there that'll invest with you at any any stage. Texas were an object, Los Angeles or Puerto Rico. Ah, I was born in LA. I'm, I, yeah. Shake it up, baby. That's part of discipline too. Not just always living in the same place out of fear, out of lack of adventure, out of laziness, out of momentum, just being you're stuck in like inertia. That's what I mean by discipline. There's a discipline to actually being able to move yourself, both literally and figuratively, wherever you want to go. That, that's power, man. If you want to know who's powerful in the world, 
there's a quote I memorized when I was a teenager. It said, who is mighty? He who could control his own desires. That was a lot of truth to that. It was like an anonymous quote. Who is mighty? The person who could control their own desires. So most people are very weak-willed. They move with the wind, you know? It's my opinion about Rich Dad, Poor Dad book. Um, it's a good idea. The basic concept, I think, is own assets, shit like that. Will Elon Musk save the world? I doubt one person will save the world. That's just for movies and fake shit. But he certainly has an impact. Too complicated for one person to fix everything. It's like finding one mentor. You're never going to find one mentor. There's no person. The world's too complex for one person to have full mastery. How to grow an Instagram account. You know, a lot, a lot of it now is just like people have catchy Instagram reels. You know, learning how to edit that stuff, putting in a couple hours, mimicking success. You see other people's videos go viral. It's easier now to do. I don't even mess with Instagram and social growth anymore. But if I wanted to, the formula is like literally right in front of you on the algorithm. Just watch what's trending. Replicate. Imitation. Imitation. Do I invest in crypto? What do you mean? I'm the one that got it. I think 100 million people saw my Bitcoin video in 2017, 2018. So I've never sold any of my crypto. I don't put all my money in crypto. I don't put all my money in anything. Some people say you should. I disagree. I mean, look, you can put all your money in one investment. Concentration can create a lot of wealth. But as they say, all your eggs in one basket can get nasty. I'm looking for risk-adjusted returns much more, you know, than pure wealth. It's not to me who makes the most money. It's who makes the most money with the least amount of dam brain damage uh, with the best risk-adjusted return. So if you risk your life to make a 1000 bucks, you're way stupider than somebody who doesn't risk anything and makes $500, you know. That's risk-adjusted returns. And you can get very complicated with the math, but that's just how to understand it. Some people are taking too much risk for what money they're making. Tony Stark. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know why people say that. I don't, I don't know that I like, like him, but uh, my dad looked like the actor Robert Downey Jr. It's funny. Well, I tried to buy some farmland from Bill Gates in his divorce. I don't think that divorce is going to hurt Bill Gates. He's got enough money. I just bought a couple. I just closed two real estate deals last week. Let me think. I, I bought one. They were both farms. I'm trying to think how many acres. One was 300. I bought about 350 acres. One was 300. One was 50. So buying up land. I got now I have over 1,000 acres. Janesh. Todd, what do you think about the vaccine? You know, <laughs> one of my mentors used to say, Ty, never be the first or the last to try an idea, new idea. So I don't think I'd be first to get vaccines. I'm not sure that I would never get it, but I like to watch a little bit. I know that makes some people mad for me to say, but just telling you the truth. How do you stop prolonging things? Procrastination is son of a bitch, isn't it? I get that. I look like the professor from Casa de Papel. You know, some people saying the vaccine is fake, and my mom hates the vaccine. My mom's very extreme on that. She's she's definitely an anti-vaxxer. Me, I don't know. I think at the end of the day, <laughs> I'm not a medical doctor. What I try to do. Get your vitamin D blood levels high. I got mine to 73. That matters for sure. Even the CDC says highly correlated and maybe causative of immune system resistance to COVID. But whether that's practical, like I said, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not sure that you can still get disease when you have high vitamin D. I just try to optimize everything I can within my control as best I can. And, um, Spin, you know, 
the rest of your life you spin in the wheel. Fate, fate is a fickle master. Those of you who think you're doing well, <laughs> the mistress called fate can turn her back on you. That's like the Aeneid, Odysseus, the great epic stories of thousands of years ago. Talked about fate. Never get too cocky. You can make a lot of money. I've made a lot of money in my life, but you can lose it all. No matter how good you are. And vice versa. Those of you who are doing very poorly, the, the mistress named Fortune can come and visit you and fall in love with you. But she never stays with somebody forever. That's why I said she's a fickle mistress. So someone said vitamin D3, 4,000 I use essential. You take 20,000. I'll tell you what you do with vitamin D. You download this app called D-Minder, and it'll tell you precisely the best time based on your latitude and longitude to get vitamin D. Why do I look younger? Mm -hmm. Cut weight. You cut weight, you look younger. My favorite person in history. Hmm. If I could meet anyone from history. Man, I, I'd like to meet this Black Hawk, this Sock and Fox Native American Indian, very famous war. He was a war chieftain. He fought America back in the day. This is 1800s, after the War of 1812. I'd like to meet Rockefeller just to see. That guy had a tremendous discipline. I'd like to meet Thor Heyerdahl, someone said, Norwegian. I'd like to meet Genghis Khan. I'd like to meet Jesus Christ, Buddha, Muhammad. Imagine meeting some of these people that went on and literally just like <laughs> hundreds of millions of people lives. Not only were changed, but like dictated by the lives of these people. So it'd be pretty interesting. I mean, Confucius and Buddha have this massive influence over all of Asia, which or most of Asia. So that would be, I, I'd like to meet, you know, some of the original people that we base these stories on, like Rob, the real Robin Hood. Imagine that. Gilgamesh. Um, someone like Moses or, or actually King Solomon. You know, it's interesting. King Solomon, yeah, Karl Marx. There's a great documentary. I mean, I'm not a communist, but um, Karl Marx was a smart man. Make no mistake, whether you're a capitalist, communist, all these people, I mean, founders of capitalism like Adam Smith, very intelligent. Um, I'll tell you, somebody that's not talked about enough that was a really sharp, well, I mean, the founding fathers of the United States were very fascinating. They came up with a strong construct. Uh, I'd like to meet, like here in, in this town, Stockholm, Sweden, some of the kings, I think it was Gustav, one of these kings, it's like all of Sweden's related to this dude. But he had so many kids with the most beautiful women. You know, he's a Viking. And Scandinavia has very beautiful women and men. I mean, I don't notice the men as much, but I've been told. And uh, I would love to meet like Gustav, King Gustav. I forget what he was, the fifth or the ninth or whatever. But this guy ran, you know, Scandinavia. As we know it now, it wasn't called Scandinavia. So I'd like to meet Catherine the Great, the Russian Tsarist. I'd like to meet <laughs> Ivan the Terrible. Anybody whose name is Ivan the Terrible, I just like, I got to meet this dude. Uh, Mubarak the Bloodthirsty. He's the one with the most children in history. He was a Moroccan king. He had like 900 sons. A lot of people relate to that dude. <laughs> if you have 900 sons, just imagine how this is. I think he was in the 1300s. So you have about almost a thousand years since there. Joan of Arc. Man, imagine meeting Napoleon. Uh, there's the one. I'm going to answer with this. Let me tell you about Napoleon. More, they say more books have been written about Napoleon as an individual person than any other individual in history. And uh, Saladin would be interesting too. So he was the the Muslim, the um, general, amazing general back in the crusade time. But 
Napoleon, look, as a track record, Napoleon was the greatest conqueror of all times. I think he was in 61 major battles. 61. Put that in perspective. Al uh, Alexander the Great was like in seven great battles. Somebody like Grant, Ulysses Grant from the U.S. military history. And I mean, I think he was in 20 battles. Napoleon, would, and, and we remember him for his losses. Doesn't that suck? People remember him as like, oh, it's Napoleon, and he lost at Waterloo. The lesson is retire while you're ahead. <laughs> like, Napoleon should have just retired before his last battle. But Napoleon was a master. Of, I learned a lot of business from Napoleon. For example, some of the things you can learn from Napoleon in battle is uh, he says, engage the enemy and then plan a lot of you trying to make money and do business you're trying to plan before you engage so engage first then sit back and plan so you still should plan because some people never plan but a lot of you are thinking like All right, i'm going to launch my business what kind of business just try to launch anything that's in the engaging the enemy and after you engage then you step back for a second and plan so it's a very interesting strategy. He was a master of communications, a master of surprise. Uh, Sun Tzu from The Art of War, I'd like to meet. This is a good question. Recommended books on Napoleon Bonaparte. There's a book, as I said, they say there's almost more books written about Napoleon than anybody. But there's a doc, there's like a, a, a mini series on Netflix that you should watch about Napoleon. It's like a, it's, you know, acted. It's pretty good. Julius Caesar, yeah. Is it too late for e-com? Hell no, man. It's like SMMA. What I told people to do SMMA in 2016 is more relevant now. No. <laughs> A lot of people are like, back then, I was like, is it outdated? I'm like, come on, man. Having 2.8 million followers, why do you think only 700 on a live call? No idea. People come and go on these calls and Instagram controls the algorithm. Maybe if I was dancing and doing stupid shit, you get more people. You start talking about history, business, discipline. You ain't going to get a lot of viewers, man. <laughs> people would rather be entertained than trained. Chess. Yeah, I play chess every day. I'm the Napoleon of 21st century. I don't know about that, um, but I do learn from Napoleon. Powerful person, man. If you ever read War and Peace, it's all about how Napoleon just transformed Europe. Many people hated him. When did I first receive my first big paycheck? I mean, I remember when I first, and so just understand how I grew up, I never really had anybody that even made six figures. So when I started making like eight, 10 grand a month, that was a big check to me. That was the biggest of my family for sure on my dad's side who grew up in Harlem and, and on my mom's side too. So my mom was a single mom. That, that was the moment, you know, someone said, you look like you have no idea. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of stuff I have no idea on th certain things. I know a thing or two XRP is bigger than we can believe. Maybe. You've been following me since my TED Talk. That my TEDx was 2014. I think I shot the video in 2013. Someone said, thanks for leading me toward reading the book, Quiet, The Power of Introverts. It's a great job. A great book, man. A lot of introverts. Those of you who are introverts, who thinks they're, they're an introvert? If you think you're an introvert, most introverts don't like being an introvert. But um, there's a lot of wealth created from people who are introverts being quiet. Bring the podcast back. I know, man. I, I used to do all these YouTubes. I used to do all these videos and podcasts. My podcast at one point was like number three or four business one in the world. Now I don't even think I've recorded one in like a year. I'm out here making money right now, you know. There's different phases in my life. 2015, when social media came and I was early and it went viral, that was the, that was, you got to play the cards that are in front of you. And so now social media is more saturated and so on. So I leave it for other people and I go blaze ahead and do stuff 
that other people aren't seeing. I'm a, I like to be ahead of the game, man. Should I go for Robert Green? <laughs> Talking about the book, 48 Laws of Power. I've read some of those. I mean, some of them are Machiavellian, you know, which I don't recommend. You don't want to be overly cynical. You don't want to be overly manipulative in this world, you know. The problem, if you understand game theory, is that the world reciprocates. So if you're overly manipulative, people will manipulate you back to resist. It's kind of like if you walk around at a nightclub punching people in the face and you go, see how I'm going to win with this? I just destroy everybody in my path. No. All of a sudden, some dudes start ganging up. It's like, see that dude who's whacking everybody in the face? Let's go break his neck. So everything in social, you have to understand the, the st social status dynamics of this world. So if you're highly skeptical, people feel that vibe. I find at the top of business, when I do big business deals, and I do a lot of stuff now with the big investment banks, and I'm around the big, big boys of business now. I was just in New York, and I meet with all the, you know, we talk to guys like Blackstone and KKR. These are monster people. The people at the top are much nicer than you think. It's a myth that as you go up the chain, people get more sharky. Most business sharks don't make much money. You can't make money just being a shark because people will gang up and eat you back. So you need to have allies and you have to have that ability to attract allies. And allies are more important than being able to fend off enemies. In fact, if you make enough allies, your allies will fight off your enemies for you. You know? What type of real estate do you do? Mostly farmland. I just, I'm buying a place in Chelsea, England right now. <clears throat> a flat there. Buying stuff in Copenhagen. People at the top are nice, but they're nice, so you don't want to get on the dark side. Yeah, I mean, look, people at the top are nicer in a normal setting. But if you get on their bad side, they're more powerful. <laughs> it's kind of like Rome. Some of you guys saw the big bouncer security guy with me. He's a nice guy, 6'6", 330 pounds, benches 550. He's a monster of a human. And he's nice. But I've seen one time I went to a party, and for some reason, the guy at the door grabbed him, said, you can't come in. Rome, Rome grabbed him, threw the dude like a movie. That dude flew literally seven, eight feet like in a movie. And I looked at the guy, and I was like, you didn't notice this is a big fucking guy? Why would you grab him? There's an example of the powerful are good allies and worse enemies. What's next for my M&A portfolio? So when you go and buy companies like I do, most companies, you don't buy much in the first quarter. The last company that I bought, um, well, I did buy, I, I took a big stake in a public company, but it was only 18.4%. But the biggest entire company that I bought was Steinmart. I bought it back in November, December. Who is doing about a billion in revenue when I bought it. Why don't I go on Clubhouse anymore? Like I said, I'm not on social media. This is the most I've been on social media in the last month. Maybe two months. I think I've only gone on this live once a year. Once this year. How many cars do I have? Now I have just one Lamborghini because I'm in Puerto Rico. You can't drive it. I got a lot of trucks. I got a couple Ford Raptors stuff. I'm going to get some stuff here in Europe. I need to have a, I like to drive around here. Europe's so cool, man. You can drive from Stockholm down to Malmo, down to Copenhagen, into Germany. Now it's a little different now with COVID, but can I do an online course about strategies to buy companies? Yeah. It's more advanced, but, but yes. I'm reading in chunks, multiple books. I like that. It's good to read multiple books at the same time. I like that way. Will I ever go on Joe Rogan? I have no idea, man. I'm so out of the loop of like, I'm kind of out of the influencer loop at this point. I'm just doing my own thing, man. Just do my own thing. Um, 
I let the influencers do the things that they want to do. I'm not in that phase. That's a great phase to be in, to launch things. But I was never, any, I was an influencer, but that was, I've been a businessman for a long time and I always revert back to what I was. It's just, you got to make hay when the sun shine. When I was just able easily in an unsaturated market to dominate on social media, I'm going to be on social media. And the second there's too many other new entrants into the market, saturating that market, I'm going to do other things, you know. Would I ever go to space? You know, I've never been interested in space. But I respect the people that I do, you know. Do I have a girlfriend? Not right now. Not right now. Some of you. I was reading an interesting book called The Game by Neil Strauss. You guys should read that. It's a great book. It's a story about pickup artists. Best-selling book. It's pretty interesting. Are you talking about making money outside of social media? Yeah, there's so many ways. I mean, man, <laughs> I, I really could say now I've been helping people make money since publicly. You know, I think I started my stuff really in 2012. So it's almost 10 years, nine years, let's say. And um, it's just easier to make money every year. I'm like, shit, people still out here complaining. It's easier to test. It's easier to launch. Software is all there. It's similar. It, it's simpler and less risky. You don't need as much capital. You can get, it's just, uh, yeah. You know, the disciplined mind. I have not read that. This is my favorite basketball player of all time. I always like Magic Johnson. I like Kyrie. Watch, I was a point guard, you know, so I love all these. Chris Paul is a friend of mine. Crazy what he's doing over there at Phoenix. Am I in, in America? Not now. Have I read the mystery method? I have. How can you start if you have nothing? <laughs> Do I hate people? So how can you start if you have nothing? Here's the thing. When you have nothing, even when you have something, you, you need something to mimic. That's the easiest way to start. You want to learn how to lift weights, get in the gym. Even if you don't have a trainer, like watch the most in shape person in the gym, mimic them. Same with making money. So the beauty now is in the past, I had to like find people who I could shadow people who can mentor me. Now you can use YouTube, you can use social to literally get into the mind of those people who you should be mimicking. You want to learn e -com? Read the full story of Jeff Bezos. There's a good book called uh, The Everything Store. And you can literally mimic, okay, you can write down, I take a notepad where with me anywhere I go and just write down, you're like, okay, this is how he got started. So that mimicking is so powerful, but people are too proud to do it. Too much pride and stubbornness in this world. Pride will destroy your net worth. It'll destroy many things. Pride, stubbornness, and sensitivity. Those are the three killers that I see. Pride, stubbornness, and sensitivity. PSS. And um, for the most part, when I see beginners, that's where they're going to lose. They're either overly sensitive so think about it. I told you I was reading that book, The Game. It's all about pickup artists back 10 years ago that lived in L.A. and all over the world. And you had to get over your sensitivity. You had to go out there. They would do like you had to talk to 70 women per day just to learn to talk, even if you got rejected, you know, just go up and strike up a conversation. It's the same with making money. You need to be able to go out there. Sales is a great place to start. You just start door to door sales. I did door to door sales. Mark Cuban did door-to-door -door sales. You know, you I remember selling chocolate when I was, I don't know, it's probably the best business training I had, probably better than all the school I went to in junior high and high school. You know, you sell chocolate and you're like door-to-door -door and you get used to that re rejection and your sensitivity drops. You ain't going to make it far in this life. There's too many people in this world that are critical that are going to decimate you. You know, so me, I'm not that sensitive. You've seen people. There's a lot of people that hate on me. I just smash through it, dude. And I literally like destroy them along the way because they end up looking stupid. You know, 
people make videos. Oh, this guy don't know shit about business. I'm like, bro, if you fucking saw me run big fucking companies, you'd be like, this is one of the most skilled business people on the fucking on all the social media and off social media. People that know me are like, uh, people who work with me are like, what the fuck? So like, you're a monster. I'm like, dude, I've been doing this so long. <laughs> so that's my strategy in terms of sensitivity. And you're going to have to, if you start now, you just got to smash through it. Not literally smash through it, but you know what I'm saying? You have to just, you're just like a robot. Robots do not get moved by things that people say to them. You can sit there in your laptop and yell at it. You press the button to turn on, it turns on. It's like, it's disciplined, you know? And so that's same person, good advice 10 times, you know, pride. Oh, I don't want to mimic that person because then I'll look like, you know, then I'll look like I'm just copying them. Well, Pablo Picasso said, good artists copy, great artists steal. Pablo, Pablo Picasso is generally considered the greatest, most prolific uh, artist of our time produced about 50, 60,000 pieces of art. Some of them are, as we know, you know, just absolute masterpieces. And he was prolific, but he mimicked because he wasn't proud. He's like, Hey, good artists copy, great artists steal. And so I think when you're starting out, you're going to have to be able to do some things that help you overcome all three of those. Someone said our personality tra traits malleable do i think neuroticism and sensitivity are on the rise i'm not sure you know when you look at what my mentor dr david bus who's an actual doctor of psychology he um i think that uh i'm not sure that mental illness is more prevalent because it's a lot of mental illness is genetic so that means it's not just started now because to be genetic means it's been here for 10,000 generations. So I don't know that mental illness, I think what happens now is people can express themselves more. Certainly we're more disconnected from nature now. That that gets you fucked up. Like whatever you do, only live 50% of your life in a city. That's my opinion. I think you're going to have a hard time really getting to the end of your life and thinking you were happy if you live 100% in a city. I don't think you need to live 100% on a farm like I do. And I don't live 100% on a farm, but I live about 50% of my life in cities and 50% in the countryside. So I think that part of the reason that you see more mental illness is people are more disconnected. When my grandma was born in 1918, about 100%, I'm sorry, about uh, 80 to 90% of the world lived in a rural place. What's up, Grant Cardone? I'm in Stockholm, Sweden, man. You buying any multifamily out here, Grant? Come on. Don't just be, you know, bounded by the United States. Let's say hi to Grant. I haven't talked to him for a second. Let's see if he's up in here. Let's see if he wants. Last time I was doing Clubhouse. I haven't been doing that in a while. So, there's Grant. Let's see if he wants to come on here. What up, Grant? been a second since i was uh yo oh i like the glasses <laughs> what's up brother is that the new look you I like in sweden it. man yeah i'm in sweden you look like a mafia dawn right now that's what those, those are grant is down in florida like a mafia dawn that's literally what i think of when i see those Don Cardione. <laughs> <laughs> we got the godfather on here Good to see you, Ty. Yeah, man. Good to see you. I was, th you know, I was thinking about you the other day, and I was like, somebody was asking me about haters, and I was like, I remember through COVID, where like all these videos, like, oh, Grant's gonna go bankrupt because uh, you know people aren't paying the rent. And I told people, I said, listen, people who survive, they know how to survive, and and uh, you know now real estate's like shit, you must have some nice appreciation on stuff right now because everybody's just flocking to residential. Like, everybody, people aren't living in big cities. You bought in all these, like, you didn't buy in New York City. You bought all this multifamily and kind of, not secondary markets in a bad way, but places that people want to live 
So how is stuff looking? It must be looking nice. I'll bet you I'll bet you I picked up 20% on the portfolio last year. Yeah. I mean, it's just that, insane. Because everybody's Cause, working from home. So commercial got First of all, when they got whacked, all that all that equity value moved over into residential, which you control. So yeah, yeah, moved into, moved into uh, industrial. I mean, that's just not going to stop. And and uh, and I kept telling people, don't don't believe people won't pay their rent. Of course, they'll pay their rent. Just because somebody tells you not to do the right thing doesn't mean right, the people that do the right thing are going to do the wrong thing. Well, and what they'll do is they'll stop paying their lease at their office because nobody's at work. So, but they will keep their house. Nobody wants to get evicted. Yeah, that's right. And and when you're renting, uh, the renter knows that if they don't pay their rent, even if the government allows it, the next time they go get an apartment, it's not going to be as nice as the last one. Exactly. Exactly. So people and people, people want to do the right thing. And look, and then, and then the government just started printing money so everybody could pay their rent. So it's not, not an issue. Now the problem is there's so much cash and all that cash, the fiat money's got to go to real assets. That's right. You can have asset inflation on your property, which is good for you on the sell so, side. I mean, we're on we're side. in a super cycle. I'm still trying to buy stuff, Ty. Yeah. You, you don't undo this cycle. This, this is going to be a bit long party. So how you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. You're looking good. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm in Stockholm, Sweden. I was in London. I'm working on buying some companies over here. And um, yeah, stuff, it's it's nice. I got to talk to you privately on some stuff. I, I started to do public company activism. So I bought a NASDAQ company. I took a control position in it. Me, me and Alex got some board seats. So we're starting to Starting to go beyond private deals and grab public stuff. When you ever gonna go public? That's the game for you, dude. Is this like whoop, re roll up or some shit like that? You know I'm gonna do something. <laughs> you'd have yeah. to, you'd have to have the three jet. You know, three jet. I'm not gonna be impressed by one G five fifty commercial and want to fly. If there ain't three, one for you, one for Elena. You know, one for the kids. One to the, da, da, da. I'm not going to be impressed anymore, Grant. Well, hey, you know what? You're doing great things. I'm always impressed by you. So, you know, what you and Alex are doing, I'm always, you know, you you, you heighten my game, bro. <laughs> hey, the Aries gang, man. Aries gang. There you go. By the way, happy <laughs> birthday. I missed your birthday. Is your, what, end of March or something? March 21st. I'm the first day. That is my grandfather's birthday. Genius man. It's a good day to be born. He was March 21. Wow, man. Yeah. Strong, strong Aries. You know? <laughs> good. Dude, you're looking great. You look like you're happy, man. And how long are you going to be there? I'm going to be here a couple weeks. But I'll be back. Are you ever up in New York or not much? Uh, not much. I'm going to be, I got all this shit I got to do. I'm meeting with BlackRock and on Blackstone and all these guys. So I've been going in and out of New York, but I'll make it. I'm going to run to bed, but let's connect when I'm back in the U.S. And maybe I'll, I'll. Hey, why don't you swing into Miami and maybe, uh, maybe, uh, you know, we'll go up to New York together, man. I can just be in your flow and your glow. We take the new, we take the new helicopter up there. That's a long well, flight. No, you don't want to go that far in the helicopter, but we could <laughs> swing it around here and have some fun. All right, man. I'm going to jump off this, but this was good. Grant, my man. Always, good, always to good to see you, bro. Tell Alex hello, man. Love you, bro. And, and uh, be great, man. Say I don't hi. know how to end this, though. All right. Bye. Okay.